personally that she actually placed the bomb on the ledge of the police station uh, and that uh, Bill Ayers knew this, was aware of this, disclosed this, that Bill Ayers himself displayed uh, diagrams of bombs. And so we took all this testimony of their involvement in this bombing to the Chicago Tribune, first to the reporter, one of the reporters on that story, then to the so-called public editor, the so-called consumer advocate, and then to the editor of the Tribune herself, and Marie Lipinski, saying, would you please correct the record? Would you tell your readers that, contrary to what you reported, there is evidence uh, that uh, Bernadine Dorn at least was involved in the bombing in San Francisco that killed a policeman and that Bill Ayers knew about it and was fully aware of it, perhaps, for all we knew, uh, might have uh, knew about it in advance or even participated in it. And they've refused to correct the record. They just won't do it. And we've discovered that uh, Bill Ayers' uh, recently deceased father, uh, who was the head of uh, uh, Con Edison, I think it was, in Chicago, very wealthy man, very liberal man, had once sat on the board of the Tribune Company. Now, there's all kinds of connections like this uh, that give me pause, give me worry about whether the media, led by the Tribune, again, Obama's home state senator, will ever want to even scratch the surface of who Obama really is. Well, I think you've made all excellent presentations, and I'd like to open the uh, uh, floor, open, uh, floor up to our audience. And uh, if you have some questions, uh, please use uh, the microphone. I'm assuming we have a microphone. Right up here, John, please. Thank you. A lady from the New York Times? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Linda. Uh, would someone like to comment on um, Mike Huckabee and, and his political background? Well, I mean, we criticized Mike Huckabee because he was involved in all sorts of ethics allegations and investigations down in Arkansas. And, you know, he said they were politically inspired uh, attacks on him. You know, but oftentimes when politicians say that, you know, it's their enemies who are calling attention to their ethics woes, it's usually your enemies who won't call attention to your ethics woes. You know, he's not going to have Republicans calling him out in Arkansas. He's going to have Democrats calling him out. And it doesn't go to the merits of the individual arguments that were made against him in terms of his abuse, alleged abuse of office and his uh, misuse of taxpayer funds down there. And, um, you know, I think it's been a real issue for him. And, and, uh, I know we took some criticism from our friends for criticizing him, but, you know, it is what it is. He was the subject of several ethics investigations, and he was in nasty drag-out fights with the Ethics Commission in Arkansas, and uh, I don't think he's adequately explained all the issues away, and uh, I've been watching it carefully. But, you know, he could be the vice presidential nominee for the Republican Party, so it may be an issue. Yes, up front here. Hi, I'm Josie Lennon from Richmond, Virginia, and I have a series of questions. Um, well, Hillary, pick, pick, I'll, I'll allow well, you to give. Okay, uh, how I'll about as quickly as I can. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, it might be in place of Harry Reid. That might be the next promise. Um, Although Obama can't promise that. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I was thinking about campaign reform and how to solve it. And I raised this question with uh, Tom Davis at a meeting uh, some months back, uh, which was the European style, scrap all of these laws about campaign and have the government give a certain a lot of money to each one individually equally and have nobody contributing anything else. Now, the answer is only the rich would be able to afford an election. Well, they're doing it that way anyhow. So I still have that question as if it would be better to have the government go ahead and pay for all the, the financing of the elections. That uh, would be a better scene. Well, uh, And also, we better go to the Sun-Times, forget the Tribune. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you'd have to repeal our First Amendment and, and in order to have that, because the First Amendment uh, is the world's premier and most radical campaign finance reform ever. It, was, it, it placed our country alone in the proposition 
that uh, the citizens were, con were going to control our elections, not the government, and that the rights of citizens to participate in our elections, the four ind indispensable democratic freedoms of speech, association, press, and assembly, uh, were going to be guaranteed against the, the, the government. And of course, the problem with, with uh, what, what you're describing, public funding, is, you know, the, what is consistent throughout history has been uh, the desire of the government to limit the citizens' involvement in, 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 in the government, and particularly to prevent citizens from criticizing the government. When, when, we, when we had the divine right of kings, if you criticized the government, you were tortured, thrown in jail, maybe executed, but you were also damned to go to hell, all right? When we separated church and state, you were just tortured, thrown in jail, and often executed, okay? So, uh, it, it, you know, and it, it, is, it is that reality that that is exactly what politicians and government officials will do if you give them the power. It is that reality against which the most successful, sophisticated group of politicians assembled in the history of the world, which was at our founding, decided that we had to do this. So if you repeal the First Amendment, you would place the government in charge. If you place the government in charge, you place incumbents in charge. And they will do two things. They will make sure that uh, the rules are written so that they will be reelected. And number two, they will do it in a way to force the citizens out and shut them up. Doesn't campaign finance the, and campaign see, campaign? In, in Europe, that is exactly, well, I'm not for the, 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 the restrictions. We already have that problem. Okay, well, but we can do something about it, okay? And, uh, and we're in the process through the courts of doing something about it. But, uh, I mean, that's just the reality. And, and in Europe, part of the uh, public funding scheme, which you were describing, also is to make it illegal for citizens to talk about campaigns or elections. There, there was a woman in, in, in England that was thrown in jail because she passed out and, and in, in, she was involved in a pro-life group. She was thrown in jail because she passed out what is the equivalent of a voter's guide that we, we many organizations in America pass out. And now, she took her case to the European Union uh, court and won. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they will turn around and use that power that we could only give them by repealing the First Amendment, and it will be directed right at you, right at you. Other questions, comments? Yes, Fred? 